I didn't think this would ever be a thing, but there's a sin right here in the title menu. New movie instead of new game? The hell? Hi, my name is David Cage. David Cage, the M. Night Shyamalan of video games. Hey David, remember how you called this a movie in the title screen? Well, movies don't require tutorials. Just thought you should know. I was just another pawn, living my pawn's life. This game predates Tumblr by a number of years, but its opening narration hits all the hallmarks of the most annoying Tumblr blogs known to man. According to Lucas, he's a special snowflake and the rest of us are living with our eyes closed. Sound familiar? New York, capital of the universe. Is that really what New Yorkers think about their city? If so, what a bunch of dicks. An open window in winter? Man, that's just gonna kill you in heating bills. How engrossed in washing your own hands do you have to be to not notice a guy holding a bloody knife shambling up behind you in the mirror? You kind of deserve to be killed if you're that inattentive. Oh god damn it, there's gonna be magical kids in this story, isn't there? I was thinking of taking a sin off for having an actual functioning mirror in a game. Just think about how seldom you actually see that. But as you'll come to see, this game goes overboard with it by printing in every one of them. Every. Single. One. Mm, looks homeless. Poor guy. Out in this freezing cold. Yeah, no New Yorker has ever said that. Oh god damn it, there's gonna be wise homeless people in this game, isn't there? Five years on the force, I've seen some murders. But. You never really get used to death. Even more Tumblr narration. FYI, narration does not equal development. A book. A Tempest by Shakespeare. If this is his, it's a pretty weird book for a killer to be reading. No, not really. By this point, it's script writing 101 that if you want your killer to be taken seriously, he has to read classical literature and quote it whenever possible. Also, that's one sin for having a book in the story that tells a parallel plot. Payphones. Of course, payphones are only a sin to you if you're under the age of 18. Older viewers are probably wondering why I would send something like that. A unisex restroom in a New York City flytrap diner? Yeah, you aren't getting any customers. See previous mirror printing sin. If you're losing that much blood from your slash wrist, you probably aren't waking up in the morning. Just saying. Even though Lucas is earning IT administrator money, an apartment this size in New York is going to cost tens of thousands of dollars a month. Another open window in New York during the winter? And Lucas doesn't even complain about the chill. Well, you have a washer, but I don't see a dryer. <laughs> mirror jump scare. Lucas uses the worst web browser known to man. There's no address bar and he can only access his email inbox and a news website that only covers video game violence stories, the weather, and world news, which just so happens to be the only topics relevant to the things happening in this game. Lucas turns on the television and the first thing on screen is a news story on the murder he was forced to commit at the diner. Turn the channel and I'm certain there'll be an ad for lawyers, occult detectives, and a Catholic priest offering free exorcisms. Convenient plot reporting is convenient. Something's bothering me about this murder, but I just can't seem to put my finger on what it is. You don't know who the killer is or why he did it. I'd say that's what's bothering you about the case. You haven't seen anything out of the ordinary yet that would make you question it. Bad computer posture. See mirror printing sin. Cheesy porn music accompanied by a thrusting camera, a bearskin rug, and a lava lamp. I should probably cut this game some slack for its sex scenes. It was 2005 and sex scenes in games were still a new thing, but damn it they didn't come up with the worst way to showcase it. What's the first thing you do after having sex? If you're these two, you put your clothes back on and get back into bed. A statuette of socks. One of the characters in my favorite video game. Never mind the fact that Tyler's favorite video game is David Cage's previous work. Since Tyler doesn't have a PC or console anywhere in his apartment, I'm going to say he shouldn't have any favorite video game. See mirror preening sin. Please don't start. I got no intention of dying today. Said everyone who ever died with no intention of dying. Is it racist that they play this kind of music for Tyler's theme song? I'm going to say it's racist. There are quick time events, and then there's this. It's like trying to play a game while inputting the Konami code every 10 seconds. And go buy yourself a video game. It's not Heavy Rain or Beyond Two Souls or anything else by David Cage. See mirror preening sin. New York is really pushing gender equality these days. That's two unisex public restrooms. Does it count as a reference to The Shining if it's not spelled backwards? No one else is working in this office on a work day except for two IT techs. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this company is going to go under pretty quickly. Giant ghost fleas. I'm actually impressed. This is so fucking stupid I don't see how this game will ever top it. So stupid. We broke up weeks ago, I'm here to collect my things, and you've done nothing but act awkwardly around me. But you played a guitar solo that wouldn't even warrant attention on SoundCloud, so let's bone. Quick time sex scene. In God of War, it's not so bad. Here, and with the mouse move it wants you to make, well, that just feels like jerking off. And jerking off is already reality's quick time event. And let's keep that camera focused right on the water bottle. Perfect. What is this abomination of a built-in computer? It has what looks to be a first-generation iPod, an old floppy disk drive, and a built-in tablet. And no way is that keyboard a QWERTY configuration. Immigration? You come break my test up? All paper store family is legal! That's racist. Oh man. What am I in a video game? Well, technically no, and also technically yes. The short end of it is that you're in a David Cage experience. Oh yeah. 
that's for the customers. Ah, they love that wise old Japanese master stuff. So you were faking that accent? That's even more racist. Also, why did you keep up the Japanese act even when you thought Tyler was from immigration and there to bust you? That seems like the more appropriate time to come clean. <laughs> I'm more American than you are, man. That's also racist. Can you tell me anything about the book? Yes, a nice edition. Leather cover, looks like one in the Shakespeare series published by Lamarck and Everett, 1884. You didn't tell him anything even remotely helpful. It says Shakespeare right on the cover, so Tyler didn't need help discovering that, and you can clearly tell it's leather bound. Tyler came all the way here to ask a rare book expert, and he could have found out all of that just by looking on Wikipedia. One need not have eyes to see. Oh god damn it, there's gonna be wise blind women in this game, isn't there? When I regained control of myself, after the murder, this symbol had been cut into my wrist with a knife. A snake. Considering that Lucas's wrists are bandaged from the cuts, Agatha shouldn't be able to feel the outline clearly enough to know what they depict. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant. A sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. What did you say? It's a passage from Shakespeare's Tempest. Evil quote Shakespeare cliche. A shame so few people read Shakespeare these days. Except for every high school student, drama class student, and aspiring stage actor. Hell, that's not even a valid complaint even if it were true. Shakespeare wrote scripts, not novels. That's a pretty good reason as to why people wouldn't like to sit down and read them since they were never intended to be read in that fashion. I'm not going to say it was stupid for this white guy to bet $200 against a black guy in a game of basketball. I'm going to say it's stupid for holding a game of basketball in minus 12 degrees Celsius while wearing only jerseys. I'm the first to admit I'm a simple man. So yeah, this gets a sin struck from the record. No way does a New York City police detective have a salary that can afford an apartment this large. Ugh, oh, see mirror preening. Who the hell keeps nothing but four quarts of milk in their fridge? Come to think of it, milk was all Lucas had in his fridge too. Well actually I did meet someone two weeks ago. He's very real and very nice. And he works in a bank too. I think this time it could turn into something serious. Back in 2005, it was completely okay for female characters to have what was basically a pet gay guy. You're not alone. You're following someone and he is... disturbing. He hides a heavy secret. Tarot cards accurately predict the plot cliché. Remember when I said that I didn't think this game could top giant ghost fleas? Well, having everything in Lucas' apartment try to kill him comes pretty damn close. Oh no, not empty cardboard boxes. So stupid. DVD cases are not threatening even when telekinetically thrown at someone. Five minutes. That's how long the scene of Lucas' apartment trying to kill him lasts. You get three sins for that. I know Lucas's brother is a priest and all, but it's no miracle that he came to Lucas' apartment just in time to save him and decided to kick down the door when no one answered. It's just lazy writing. His pen. There ought to be some fingerprints on it. Stolen evidence is inadmissible in court. You are ruining any chance you have of prosecuting Lucas. How did the people responsible for the killings know that the police would be showing up at Lucas' apartment today? Painting the walls and sitting out these candles had to take some serious time. And all that effort to frame Lucas is sort of unnecessary since the police already have enough evidence to convict him. Painting pentagrams on the floor and splashing blood on the wall doesn't really accomplish much. I'm sorry, what? What, what are you? Stop it! You can't just start ripping off the Matrix halfway through your game! You came out six years too late for that! Just... just start dinging and don't stop until this scene is over. Did you see what that guy just did? You didn't raise your eyebrows even a tenth as much as I did when watching this scene. I hope there's a good explanation for all this. Best I can do for you is that Quantic Dream was working on two different games and then decided to combine them into one. Just what are you trying to tell me here? That this guy is Superman? That's your excuse? Well, it does make for the worst superhero origin story in recent memory. And you seriously expect me to buy that crap? There were multiple witnesses to Lucas dodging bullets and jumping over overpasses. This should not even be up for debate. When the press finds out that Kane slipped through our fingers, they're gonna make me a laughing stock, and the mayor's gonna come looking for my head. David Cage apparently thinks 80 stereotype police chiefs are still totally doable. Is he going to threaten to have their badges next? Maybe bust them down the traffic cops? So the Oracle's thing is he makes people kill others for the sacrifice by stabbing them three times around the heart. The problem with that is that he chooses people at random. Here he picked a guy in a laundromat to kill a woman and the guy just happened to have a switchblade on him. What happens if the person he picks doesn't have a knife? The ritual is pretty specific so randomness leaves a lot of room for error here. 
Hmm. Giant ghost fleas or flying stone angels? This one's a toss-up, guys. You choose which one you think is the dumbest. By the way, what happened to all that kung fu and shoryukens and bullet dodging you could do earlier? Seems to me that could be really handy right now. Nobody has powers like that. You're not turning into a Superman, Lucas. Well, it does make for the worst superhero origin story in recent memory. Hey, if they're going to use the same line twice, then so am I. My name's Barney. Barney? Like in The Silence of the Lambs? And Carla's in an asylum to visit a murderer? If this guy is strapped to a chair, then... Oh... Never mind. Are you hurt? Are you sure you're alright? By the way, your friend and colleague that was with me in there is dead. Just thought you should know since you didn't ask me about him. Another homeless person. I get the feeling they're everywhere. And they're watching me. <laughs> I must be getting paranoid. Nope, that's a perfectly legitimate thought. Hell, where I live, they're usually masturbating while doing it. Hey, remember when you jumped a good 10 feet in the air to get on top of a subway train? Having to climb a pipe is kind of a downgrade from that. It also warns mention that climbing this pipe requires quarter-circle mouse movements. It's like trying to climb a ladder while inputting the shore you can. And for an expert's point of view on the subject, we have with us today one of the most renowned specialists on Mayan civilization. Lucas didn't even turn the TV on this time for the plot convenient news report. It turned itself on and immediately to a channel talking about the Mayan exhibit. And this is right after Agatha finished telling Lucas that the Mayans are involved with the sacrifice killings. Just stay calm, Tiffany, and answer their questions. I'll, I'll hide in the apartment. Everything will be fine. You'll see. Why is Lucas even remotely worried about the police at this point? He threw them around like ragdolls earlier and dodged every bullet they shot. I honestly have no idea how the Mayan professor died here. Lucas clearly pushed him out of harm's way, but when Lucas gets back to him, he stays alive just long enough to move the plot along to its next nonsensical point. And the Codex speaks of the coming of a child, a prophet, the answer to all of life's questions. <laughs> the Oracle kills to find the child. So you're telling me that all the people that the Oracle kills are just random people with no real significance? He just does it because it helps him sense the MacGuffin child? The Oracle's been doing this for two millennium, but the girl was just born only a few years ago. Why was he killing people to help him find someone who hadn't been born yet? Okay, that's it. I'm taking a break. Maybe even a drink. When a game starts throwing Mayan prophecies at you with guys dressed like this and what started out as a murder mystery, anyone would get a bit overwhelmed. Omniscient Council of Evil Vagueness. I've heard of going gray due to stress, but blonde? That's a new one. I've seen this exact scene in just about every Spider-Man movie. Yeah, it's cliche there too, but at least there it's believable in that context. Lucas, you have to come over right now. They will kill me if you don't come. Just a second ago, the Oracle was after your brother at the church. Now he has your ex-girlfriend held hostage. I know this last act of the game is rushed, but this game is spitting out plot points like a machine gun at this point. This roller coaster can be stopped at will at the top of the track to let people off. Hey, remember when you could jump 10 f Oh, forget it. Lucas' superpowers only activate when the plot needs him to. Oh, thank God. Lucas is dead and this game is over. Oh, God damn it, Deus Ex Machina. Hey, Lucas' hair color is back to normal. I hear your thoughts. I know that this case has disturbed you enough to make you listen to what I have to say. This is the first time you've met with her. How would you have any idea what she's been thinking? What are you doing here, babe? There's a train leaving in one hour for Florida. It'll probably be the last one for a long time. I'll be on it, Tyler. With or without you. What do you do when it's the end game of your story and the comic relief character is still alive? You put him on a bus never to be seen again. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna need Guile's theme again. Committing a fatal error, Lucas. I'm going to have to eliminate you. Oh. Oh. There are AIs after the Indigo Child now. I'm going to need another drink. We're the Invisibles. 
Since the dawn of time, we've been secretly observing the clans. The entire last half of this game has been nothing but one long info dump after another. Characters have been just showing up left and right, explaining their purpose and connections, then stepping aside for the next character. Now even the hobos are a secret society that have been watching everyone since the beginning and only now want to help. What was stopping them from keeping Lucas from killing the man in the diner? Or saving Agatha, or Lucas's girlfriend? They were there for all of those events. The child will have the answer to all questions. And the one who hears her message will have access to infinite power. I like this plot a lot better when it was in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Right now, Lucas is technically dead. Even Carla said his skin is like ice, but that's not enough to stop her from boning guy she's only known for one day and has spent the past week chasing for murder one. I know it's the end of the world of all, and hey, whatever gets you there, I say. But damn, girl, show some standards. And the same goes for Lucas. Your girlfriend was just murdered a day ago. You literally started this relationship with Carla on top of her grave. Despite the fact that it's been repeatedly stated that the temperature is well below freezing and the fact that everyone around is rugged up in numerous layers, Lucas and Carla strip down to their bare skin and have sex in their unfurnished, unheated boxcar. Where the hell did you get that? You were hiding with an order of hobos who lived in an old subway car an hour ago. You telling me they had an Arctic Cat ATV on hand? Ugh. You know the drill. The answer is 42, by the way. This is supposed to be the good ending, but then you realize that Lucas is still wanted for murder, Carla is not only dating him, but is pregnant with his kid, and there is no way to clear Lucas's name. That means that our child was radiated by the chrome at Wishita. Bullshit. You had sex just hours before Carla arrived at the base where the chroma well was. An egg doesn't turn into a fetus that quickly. Plus there's the fact that you're dead. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that one. And go buy yourself a video game.